wall is simply a relatively long and narrow band of writing material brought up on itself in order to render transport and storing easier. Although we tend to associate the raw format with papyrus as writing material, the fact is that throughout history, many cultures have adopted this book format using all sorts of materials available to them, and not only papyrus. In this video, we will see the existing types of roll depending on the direction of the writing, what the Greco Roman roll of the classical period looked like, and how the roll format survived in the West and adapted to the new needs of the time during the Middle Ages. Therefore, let us start with the different sorts of roll that can be found depending on the disposition of the written text. According to this criterion, the raw format can adopt two variants, horizontal development and vertical development. The first type, the raw with horizontal development, has a text laid in pages, that is, columns parallel to the rolling axis and therefore perpendicular to the length of the band. This format is called volumen in Latin and roll proper in English. In order to read it, the reader would hold the roll horizontally, with both hands in parallel, the right one holding the part of the book that he had not read yet, and the left hand the already read part. The best known examples of this type are the Greek or Roman roll from the classical period, made of papyrus, and the modern U.S. liturgical rolls containing the Torah, made of leather or parchment. When the written text runs vertically in a single column parallel to the text of the band, is called rotulus in Latin and a scroll in English. In order to read it, the reader grasped it in this way. One hand, normally the right one, held from above the unread part, unrolling it as he or she progressed in the reading, while the other hand, from below, rolls up the part already read. A good example of this type are the medieval western scrolls and the modern Ethiopian rolls. A particular sort of roll is the Chinese roll made of bamboo, silk or even paper. As the Chinese is written in vertical columns from left to right, the reader holds the roll horizontally with both hands in parallel, but the writing is not let in columns as in the western rolls, but in a single long band following the length of the band, just like our scrolls. Let's pass now on to the Greco-Roman role of the classical period. Regretfully, no Greek or Roman book has preserved complete from this period, but we can make an accurate reconstruction of it thanks to some fragments that have come down to us, numerous figurative representations and some written descriptions of Greek and Roman authors. As the name suggests, it belongs to the group of horizontally laid writing and constituted the first book format in Western culture, although it was imported from Egypt together with the papyrus it was made of. The classical roll was built out of a series of rectangular pieces of papyrus called pages, plagulae in Latin, glued in a way that the right end of each plagula was superimposed on the left end of the following one. In this way, the writing could proceed easily even on the unions of the leaves that were called colesis. The whole piece was rolled up on itself or around an axis made of wood or bone, called omphalos in Greek and umbilicus in Latin, that is, belly bottom, that was fixed to the edge of the band to reinforce its consistency. The endings of the umbilicus were called cornua, horns, and frequently received some kind of decoration. The top and bottom margins of the band, or frontes, were carefully polished with promise. At least in the Latin world, the first plagulae, or leaf of the roll, was called protocolon, and contained the title and author of the work copied in the roll. Because the title had to be seen when the roll was closed, this page was written on the exterior side, while the rest of the text occupied the interior side of the roll, and therefore the fibers of the protocolon run in the opposite direction than the rest of the text. 
deal the possibility to render available the identification of their work was a sort of label, syllabus, titulus, hanging from one end of one of the cornua of the umbilicus. Some sort of clasp, lora, and a leather sleeve, toga, for protection, completed the British object. If our work was too long to be contained in a single roll, then all the rolls that made it up were lodged together in a case called capsa. The roll received writing only in its inner part, where the fibers of papyrus run horizontally. The text ran in the same direction with the papyrus fibers and was arranged in columns or solidus parallel to each other. The text lines received the name of stichoi in Greek and verses in Latin and were relatively short, made up on the average length of the Homeric verse which has between 34 and 28 letters and around 18 syllables. In order to read this book, the reader held it with both hands in parallel. The right hand held the unread part of the book and the left hand the already read part. As the reading progressed, the reader would simultaneously unroll with the right hand and roll up with the left. And therefore, when he or she finished reading the text, the book was totally rolled up in the left hand and had to be rewound if somebody else wanted to read it again. This was the predominant book model and almost the only one in classical antiquity. But already during the late antiquity, the role had to face the competition of a rising format, the codex, that ended up superseding it, but never completely. In fact, we still find roles during the Middle Ages, although for residual uses. But as a matter of fact, in most cases the medieval role is actually of the scroll type, with a single written column running along the whole length of the band, made up almost always of parchment. Of the genres found most often in scroll format, probably the most idiosyncratic are the necrologies and the so-called rotuli mortuorum, or scrolls of the dead. An example of necrologies in a scroll format comes from Sante Rule, where a rotulus longissimus, that is, a very long scroll, was kept containing the names of the deceased brothers and their deceased relatives, and on the day of the general anniversarium, the scroll was extended on the altar. In the image, we see another necrology from the 15th century coming from the Cathedral of Gent in Belgium. The Rotuli Mortuorum are parchment scrolls containing the announcement of the death of someone important, normally an ecclesiastical person, but not necessarily. A messenger took the scroll around a number of institutions somewhat related to the deceased, and in each of them a dedication was added with an expression of condolence or a prayer, until finally the messenger arrived back at his departure point after a journey that in some occasions exceeded the 600 miles. Together with the Rotuli Mortuorum, the old book format survived in southern Italy in the scrolls of Exultat. They were profusely decorated and were used during the Easter liturgy, when the deacon, standing at the pulpit, read from them and, as he read, he let the already pronounced part fall over the pulpit, so that the faithful sitting nearby could admire the magnificent illustrations that were painted upside down in relation to the writing. We also know of litanies copied on scrolls. At least one containing intercessions for King Louis the German and his wife the Queen Emma, decorated with gold and silver, was documented in Frankfurt. And also poetry was copied now and then on scrolls. Another genre sporadically copied in scroll form was the chronicle, and at the present a few of them have been preserved, and some are notably long. And still, Ultimately, were the charters the written product that proved to be best fitted to adopt the scroll format. Generally, they constrained themselves to reduce dimensions of few plagulae, also because charters are in themselves not very long texts. 
but sometimes several charters more or less related to the same issue were thrown together one to the next in order to form a scroll unsure that they wouldn't be disbanded and lost. These scrolls received the technical name of Thomas Cincolesimus. Some of these scrolls have been preserved in European archives. For example, one is in the National Archives in Madrid, Spain, and another 30 meters in length in San Domenico of Bologna. In the image, we see the Manseter manuscript or Hamburg roll of a length of 6 meters from the final decades of the first half of the 15th century. Mm -hmm. 